right, hello everyone. Uh, welcome to our video lecture. Uh, I, I apologize if you know the quality of the video is not not as good as you used to. Uh, but you know, if you find that uh, this is because I, I haven't done one of these videos for for so long now. So um, yeah, so the quality might might be might be not not very good. Uh, but anyway, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll try my best. All right. So uh, this video is about about chapter ten. Right. Uh, and specifically about the other, the second half of chapter 10. Uh, so we already started uh, working on chapter 10 uh, last Thursday, right? And uh, chapter 10 is about long-term assets. Uh, so in the previous class, we have covered um, the uh, long-term tangible assets, right? So we we have gone through some example where you know we discuss how the company may treat, um, you know. The acquisitions of, of a specific assets, right, of specific tangible assets, um, and uh, you know, we also talk about you know the asset retirement uh, obligation as well, right? and this is specifically applied to to the the tangible asset that is uh, natural resources. Right? Uh, so, um, all right. So you know, for today, in today's video, we're going to talk talk a little bit about intangible assets, right, and um, after that, we're going to talk about some uh, specific topic uh, related to to long-term asset right? specifically we're going to talk about uh, how a company can capitalize um, the, the interest right? how they can capitalize interest on the loans that they acquire uh, to you know to build a specific uh, assets and then we also uh, we we'll spend some time talking about R&D R&D costs as well right so uh, first of all let's talk about intangible assets right so uh, you know the, the, the terminology kind of gives you know kind of already self explain right the concept uh, so intangible assets are the asset that you know we cannot touch we cannot we cannot see right it lacks the asset lack a physical substance right uh, so example intangible asset may be you know um, copyright right uh, franchise uh, patents trademarks right? and then there's another uh, type of intangible asset that is purely the product of accounting uh, that is that's goodwill right so um, the company can purchase an intangible asset or it can develop an intangible asset right um, now for example let's say a company you know spend uh, some money in developing a new technology right and after they successfully uh, have the technology they, they find a patent for it right? so uh, the the, the pattern that they develop in this case right is, is an intangible asset that they develop right uh, but then let's say if the company want to just go purchase a patent right and they go out and purchase a patent from another company or from from inventors right? so in this case they purchase they purchase an intangible asset um so for intangible asset if the intangible asset have a have a finite useful life right then we will have to amortize it over over the over the useful life of the intangible asset if the intangible asset does not have a have a fixed you know useful life then then we can just you know we don't have to, to, to amortize it right and usually the the cost of intangible assets let's say if the company purchased the cost uh purchase uh, the, the the asset then you know usually the cost include the purchase drive plus all other costs necessary to you know to get the asset ready for use right uh, but let's say if the company developed the intangible asset themselves right Let's say you know, for example, you know the case of uh, patents, right? Uh, then you know, usually the the cost of the, the asset only include the, the legal fees and the, the fee that the cost that they incur to file the patent. Right? The R and D costs themselves, the R and D costs themselves usually are not capitalized, right? And uh, usually under gap, the company will have to expand the R and D R and D cost, right? So um, let's take a look here. So here's uh, you know the definition of, of of the main uh, intangible assets, right? Uh, so we have patents, we have copyrights, we have trademarks, franchises, right? So uh, almost all of these assets has some sort of fixed useful lives, right? So in the case of patents, it's usually 20 years, uh, copyright 70 years, trademark 10 years, um, and then franchises. So for the first, for, in the case of franchises, the useful life depends on the the, the, the specific contract between the franchisor and the franchisee. Right? So the franchisor is the one who who own the, the franchise, right? Franchisee is the one who want to use the, you know, the image, the trademarks, right? And want to, to, to operate 
as if they 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 are you know, part of the franchise or uh, business. Right. Uh, so usually the the contract between the franchise or and franchisee was specify you know a fixed period of time where the franchisee can use you know the 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 the, the, the trademark and the, the products of the franchise or right uh, now uh, you know it you know it all depends on on on, on the, the the deal between between them right uh, there's not a rule uh, specified specifying the you know what is the minimum what is the maximum um, life of of a franchise right now if you take a look at the cost here so most of the time you know the costs are the costs include you know the purchase price plus any additional fee that are that are necessary to to make the, the trademark to make the, the asset ready all right um all right now let's talk about goodwill so again goodwill is just a, a pure uh, product of accounting right so what is goodwill uh, goodwill uh, is a type of asset that represents the unique value of a company as a whole right, over and above its identity for tangible or intangible asset so um Goodwill, I believe, you know, Goodwill was created to to justify for for an overpriced uh, overpriced uh, purchase. <laughs> um, so, for example, let's say we have a company. You know, let's say you know we 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 run a company, right? And let's say our company, let's say we are company A, and we go out and we purchase company B. Now, uh, for company B, uh, let's say the fair market value of company B is five million dollars, right? Uh, but we end up paying seven million dollars for for company B. Uh, so the two million dollars that we overpaid, uh, usually we, we treat it as goodwill. Right. So again, is that match the the, the the definition here? Right. So that value represents the unique value of a company as a whole, over and above. Right. It's identifiable, tangible, or intangible assets. Right. Um, all right. So usually, you know, technically in theory, goodwill can be produced by the clientele right, or the reputation of the of the other company that we purchase, right? or it can, you know, represent the 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 talent that will come along with the the you know the acquired company. Right? So let's say if the employees of those company have a very specific uh, set of um, of uh, skill set, right? Then uh, you know that may also contribute to the goodwill, right? uh, or you know favorable business locations. Right? Um, but again, these are just you know in theory, right? Uh, in in realities, you know what I believe is that uh, a lot of times, once the company purchase, uh, make a purchasing decision, right? Usually they have to they have to to bid, and maybe there's a bid war, and they may have to overpay. Uh, or in case of you know if a company that is publicly traded, uh, right? If the if the if the acquired company is is a publicly traded company, so the moment that the the M and A, well, the moment that the merger uh, deal is you know, is is broadcasted. Right? Uh, a lot of people want to go and try to buy. You know, trying to 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 to, to drive the, the price of the acquired company up, uh, and then the 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 the, the acquirer, right? the the purchaser, uh, end up have to pay higher price. Right? But anyway, you know, that's just my my series. Um, anyway, all right. So how do how do we calculate goodwill? Right. So goodwill again. You know. We we take the fair value of the consideration given in exchange for the company, right? so acquisition price. Subtract the fair value right, of the identity for net asset acquired. All right. Um, so uh, let's take a look at this example here. All right. So uh, Smithson Corporation acquired all of the outstanding company uh, common stock of Ryder Corporation in exchange for one eighty million cash. So in this case. Uh, Smithson is the acquirer right, and Ryder Corporation is the the, the acquiree. Right? So Smithson trying to buy, you know, trying to, to, to buy riders. Um, so Smithson assumes all riders' long-term liabilities, which have a fair value of $120 million at the date of acquisition. The fair value of all identifiable assets of riders are f as follows. So they have receivable of $50 million, the inventory of $70 million, uh, PP&E $90 million, and patents $40 million. Right, so now here we calculate the, the, the goodwill. So the fair value, right, uh, the cash that, that Smithson is giving up is $180 million. All right. Now uh, the net assets, right, the net worth of, of riders right, is calculated by taking you know, 
uh, all of the fair value, right? subtract subtract the, the, the all the liabilities that Swiss had to, to assume. All right. So the the net value of of rider is only one thirty million dollars. Right? Only one thirty million dollars. So the so net value of rider is only one thirty million dollars, but Smithson is paying one eighty million dollars for for the whole thing. Right? So that's why in this case, you know, we have a fifty million dollars goodwill. So Smithson, you know, pay a, a, a pay a, pay the a, a premium of fifty million dollars right, on this on this acquisition, and they are going to treat it as a goodwill. Right? So how do we record this goodwill? Right? So um, right. So um, this is you know for 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 Smithson, right? Uh, so on the book of Smithson, they're going to receive basically they're going to debit all of the the asset that they you know they they receive from from Ryder. Right? So we have a debit for receivable inventory pp and e patent right um, and then we have a credit of all the liabilities that the smithson have to have to um, to, to to assume uh, plus you know we have a uh, cash right giving up by smithson so we credit cash as well right? so the difference between you know between all the asset they receive and the you know the liabilities and the cash that they 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 give away is the goodwill right? so here we have a debit of goodwill for 50 million dollars all right um all right so that is you know basically that's the case of, of intangible assets all right. um now let's just talk uh about um you know some of the specific um topics uh so first of all let's talk about capitalized interest interest capitalizations Right. Uh, so let me start here. Right. So um, a lot of times, company will sell contract their own assets. Right. So either they, you know, they building their own building, or you know they they uh, you know develop a new new prototype, new products, right, new technology. Right. So all these are examples of self contracted assets. So when we deal with self contracted assets, there are two major issue arise, arising um, so first of all we have to deal with uh, overhead costs right how do we allocate the overhead costs over the the construction of the assets and the second problem is you know um, what do we do with the interest that the company incur right? uh, in case the company um, acquires some loans right? borrow some money to to to, to contract the assets all right so in in, in this class we, we mainly focus on 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 the second problem because the, the first problem the overhead allocations is is more of a manager accounting problems right um, but uh, anyway you know so for overhead allocations right, usually we're gonna you know try to estimate all of the allocate all of the overhead costs that uh, the, 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 the 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 project may may incur right? and then we will have to find you know um, a way to, to allocate the overhead cost to to um, to the products, right? and usually this you know this process involving uh, the the, uh, the company will try have to, to calculate some sort of you know overhead rate uh, right? and and find a way to apply the overhead rate to, to the products, right? Um, so for those of you who have taken my my major accounting classes, you know you will you you will understand what what I, I mean. Uh, but anyway, so that is just you know that's not the focus of our our class here. Our class here, you know, we are studying financial accounting, right? So we uh, we, we we focus more on the on the financial matters here, which is uh, interest capitalizations, all right? Um, all right. So first of all, let's talk about um, what is the premise of this, right? So the premise of, of interest capitalization is that the company will um, borrow money to you know to 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 to, to fund to fund the, the construction of the asset. Right? So let's say the company is trying to build a new product, right? Uh, so they're gonna borrow, let's say they borrow a specific loan from a bank, right, and use that that loan, that designated designated fund for the use of the of the uh, construction of the of the new products. Right? Um, so in this case, we have you know we have a specific loans right? uh, that is used for for these constructions. Right now, a lot of times, right, the company 
you not borrow a specific loans from from the bank you know to to designate that that borrow fund to to the to the construction of the asset um, a lot of time they will have already some some sort of outstanding loans right, from the bank and they will you know just allocate some of that fund right that they borrow uh, to the products all right um, so in this case right, we don't have a specific loan that you know that are allocated to to the product right but we have a, a portion of, of some some outstanding loans that will be you know, used you know to, to fund the to fund the product or fund the, the project um, so either way right, either way the, the interests are you know are qualified to be to be capitalized all right uh, so first of all let's talk about what kind of asset right, can be qualified for for interest capitalization right? um, so um, usually right uh, you know all kind of uh, usually if the company um, want to construct their their own assets right and the asset are you know are discrete you know considered as a discrete project right uh, you know and you know if the asset is for for either for use or sell right uh, usually you know this asset can can qualify for can qualify for 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 interest capitalizations right um, now the exception here I believe is uh, inventory right so let's say the company is borrowing money to to produce the inventories uh, then in this case you know it's, it's not going to be it's not, it's not going to be um, qualified right because inventory is it's not it's not something that that can be considered as a qualifying asset right uh, in terms of the period of capitalization so the company can only capitalize the interest right, during the period that they they construct the, the assets right uh, so here they said the period should begin when the construction begins right um, and the first expenditure is made as long as the interest costs are actually being incurred right um, now is you know it's gonna stop when when the project is, is finished right now one of the thing one of the condition here right is that you know the expenditure has to be made along as long as the interest costs are incurred right um, what does that mean it means that There has to be expenditure. There has to be expenditure uh, incurred here. All right. Um, let's say the company they say they are, that they are in the process of producing, you know, or, or constructing the assets, right? And uh, but in fact, they, they, they do not do anything. Right? They just say that you know they they say we plan to to build this con to to build this asset to construct the asset right? uh, starting this year and we're gonna finish it in five years. Right. Uh, but in reality, they don't do anything and, uh, for the first two years, and they only started constructing the, the, the asset in the third year. Right. Uh, so in this case, the f in the first two years, you know, basically there's no expenditure incurred, and you know, in this case, they cannot do, they cannot really expand, uh, they they cannot really capitalize the interest in the first two years. Right. Uh, now, on the other hand, you know, some companies they may uh, further the the. The, the the duration of their the the, of the construction of the assets right? uh, just you know just so that they can they can capitalize their, their interest right uh you know so let's say you know the no in in normal sit in normal conditions the the construction of the asset only take let's say three years uh, but then they say it, it would take them five years right so in this case right in this case uh you know they they will have they might only be able to 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 capitalize the interest for the first three years right um, now if someone find out that though you know if they someone find out if the auditors find out that the company overstated the duration right to take advantage of the interest capitalizations um, you know then they they, they, they may, 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 may may get into trouble right. all right so let's take a look at this example here all right so on January 1st 2021 the Mills Conveying Equipment Company began uh, construction of a building to be used as its uh, office headquarters. The company was completed. The building was completed on June 30th of 2022. All right, so it take them about one and a half years. Right? 
uh, and the expenditure on the project, mainly payments to subcontractors, were as follows. All right, so January 1st, 2021, $500,000. March 31st, 2021, $400,000. Uh, September 30th, 2021, $600,000. Right. So as of December 31st, 2021, the accumulated expenditures right, is $1.5 million. And then uh, in 2022, they incur another $900,000. Right. Now on January 1st of 2021, the company obtained $1 million of construction loan with 8% interest rate. The loan was outstanding during the entire construction period. The company's other interest-bearing debt include two long-term notes of $2 million and $4 million with interest rates of 6% and 12% respectively. Both notes were outstanding during the entire construction period. All right. So um, first of all, right, so here they are they're constructing a building. Right, so you know, usually that can be considered as a qualifying asset. Uh, second of all, in both years, right, they they are building this building in 2021 and 2022. In both years, you know, they do incur real cap, uh, real uh, expenditures. Right. Um, so you know, in 2021, 2021, they incur a total of 1.5 million dollars. Right. So in this case, you know, they can they can uh, capitalize the interest. Right. Uh, now. In terms of loans, right? So here they have one specific loan that you know that's going to be designated to to fund this project, right? This one million dollar loan. This is the construction loan that they acquire to 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 build this building. And on top of that, they have you know two outstanding loans, right? Two million dollars and four million dollars. Right? So these two loans, you know, even though you know they are not, even though they 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 they, they do not say that these two loans are designated to to build the, the buildings, right. uh, but you know, under gap rule, uh, you know, these two buildings, uh, sorry, these two uh, loans are assumed, you know, to also be used for for the construction of the of the building, right? Um, all right. So, how do we? Let's see how do we, uh, you know, calculate the amount that the amount of interest that we can capitalize, all right? So, uh, usually there are, there are three steps here, all right? So. Uh, first step is to down here. You can see first step is to determine the the weighted average accumulated expenditures. All right. So basically, you know, we will have to calculate what is the the weighted average that of expenditure that the company has accumulated during the year. All right. Uh, now the reason why we have to do this is that in uh, you know when we are dealing with interest capitalizations we cannot capitalize the whole interest expense incurred in the year right we can only we can only incur we can only uh, capitalize the amount of interest that are associated with the expenditures all right the expenditure spent right so meaning you know let's say the company borrow in other words let's say the company borrow one million dollars here right um, but it could be that you know during the first year they they, they do not use 100% of this one million dollars on the to pay for the expenditures right maybe they only use you know uh, a portion of the, of the one million dollars for the to cover the expenditures so in this case you know uh, we can we really recognize the, the the interest right uh, that are associated with the expenditure the, the expenditures uh, that the company uh, used the, the loan to pay for right? So this first step here is to, you know, somewhat to, to in you know, in, a, in a way, trying to to, to connect the expenditures uh, to the the amount of expense that the company can capitalize, All right? Um, and the second step is to calculate the amount of interest to be capitalized. Third step is to compare the calculated interest with the actual interest incurred, All right? Uh, so let's let's take take a look here. Right. So first step. Again, is to de determine the weighted average accumulated expenditures. Right. Uh, now, depending on whether or not the expenditures are incurred, you know, evenly throughout the construction period, right? We may have a different way to calculate the the expenditures. Um, so, um, first of all, right, if let's say the expenditure is calculated is uh, incurred uh, evenly throughout the period, right? Then, you know, the way we're going to calculate it is to you know take the total accumulated expenditure right, and divide it divided by two. Um, so you know, this is the, the typical way in accounting right, for us to calculate an, an average amount, right? 
So remember, you know, in some some scenario when we had to calculate average asset, right? We take the the beginning uh, asset, right? Beginning balance asset uh, plus the ending balance asset divided by two, right? That uh, the way we calculate average, right? So in this case, you know, similar uh, similar um, uh, mentalities here, right? So we have one point five million dollars in total throughout the year, um, you know, throughout the first year, right? Twenty twenty one. So we're gonna calculate the average accumulated expenditures by you know taking one point five million dollars divided by two, that give us seven fifty thousand dollars, right? Um, now, if the expenditures are not incurred evenly throughout the year, right, then we will have to you know really calculate the the weighted average expenditures, right? The time weighted average expenditures. So in this scenario, right, in this example, they kind of tell us you know by you know what month like how much how much cost has been incurred right so by january by march by september 30th right so this way we can kind of calculate we can use this to calculate the the time weighted expenditures right so uh for the five hundred thousand dollars incurred you know as of january 1st of 2021 this right this expenditure basically assume that you know it's assumed that uh we assume that each manager is going to be outstanding for for the whole period for the whole year, so it could be twelve month over twelve. Uh, for the expenditures that is you know incur as of March thirty first, twenty twenty one, this is nine over twelve, right? Nine months over twelve months, right? And then similarly, you know, for the expenditure incur on uh, September thirtieth of twenty twenty one, right? So this is basically only only um, you know. Yeah, ascending for for the month of September, uh, sorry, uh, October, uh, November, December, right? So in this case, only three months, right? So our, you know, we take the expenditure times the, the portion of the year, right? That give us, you know, the, the weight expenditures. So at the end, we add everything together, that give us the average accumulated expenditures for the year 2021, right? Uh, so either way, case is fine, right? But let's say if, you know, we, we do not assume if, if the, 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 the if the problem specifically tell us that you know by that month by this month right, how much is incurred by this month how much is incurred then we we'll probably have to calculate the the time weighted expenditures right but let's say if they don't tell us that information then we can kind of assume that you know the, the expenditure is incurred evenly right and we, we we use this method all right um all right so that's the first step right now second step so in this case, right, we, we, we know, you know, we know the specific time, timeline of the expenditure incurred. So that's why we're going to use this amount, right? average accumulated expenditures, $950,000. So now in the second step, right, second step, we're going to calculate the amount of interest to be capitalized. All right. Uh, so remember, right. These companies they have three loans outstanding during the period. The first one is one million dollars, right, and to be used for, and this one million dollars is is the construction loan, right? They they're gonna use this construction loan for the for the construction of the buildings, and then on top of that they also have other outstanding loan as well, right? The two million dollars and the four million dollars, right? Uh, so in this step two, right, we will have to pay attention here, right? So in step two, right, here they do not uh, exactly say it, but what we have to do here is you know to make sure that we pay attention to the amount of the uh, weighted you know average expenditures right so in this case the weighted average expenditure is nine fifty thousand dollars which is smaller than the specific loan right than the specific construction loan of one million dollars right so in this case we can just use the the interest rate of that one million dollar specific loan all right remember that you know the, the one million loan right, has eight percent interest, and this is the the, the construct loan that has the specific purpose of you know has a that we're gonna use this this uh, the fund of this specific loan to build uh, the building right. So here that's why we're using eight percent here. All right. Now what happens when the expenditure right then the what happens when the average expenditures is higher than the specific loan right? Let's say here in this case, let's say we have a 1.5 million dollars right, instead of 950 thousand dollars, right? 
So in that case, you know, we can only use 8% up to up to the amount of $1 million. All right. And then what is uh, more than that, we will have to uh, look at the we will have to look at the, 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 the interest rate of the other outstanding loan to calculate the, the interest capitalized. Right. Because in this case, you know, uh, if the if the weighted right, weighted expenditure is higher than this the specific loan, right, that means the company will have to use the funding acquired from the other loans right, to, to fund the project. Right. So in this case we have to use the the interest rate of the other loans to you know to calculate the, the amount of interest that can, can be that can be capitalized. Right. And we're gonna take a look at one of the one example to see how, how that works. Right. Um, right, so now you know back to our example here, right? Because our uh, weighted average expenditure is only nine fifty thousand dollars, so that means the whole amount of the loan of one million dollars can can be can be used to cover this. So that's why we only use eight percent here. So after that, we calculate the expenditure as uh, sort of the interest capitalized, the capitalized interest, which is seventy six thousand dollars. All right. So what we do here, we take one point five million dollars, which is the total cost, right, plus the capitalized interest. So our total accumulated expenditures right, is one million five hundred seventy six thousand dollars right, which includes now which now includes the amount of interest capitalized all right uh, now step three is to compare you know the the um, amount that we calculate right the interest capitalized with the actual uh, interest that the company incurred so in this case you know it so happens that uh, the 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 actual interest incurred is you know exactly seventy six thousand dollars, right? Um, oh, sorry, is uh, is six hundred eighty thousand dollars, right? Uh, so in this case, you know we're going to use the lower amount, right? Which is again the amount that we calculated, which is seventy six thousand dollars, all right? Um, <coughs> all right. So uh, the method that we just learned here, right? We call this is the specific interest method, all right? And why is this specific interest? Because we are using the interest right, of the loan, right, of the loan that that the company using here, that the company uh, has here, right. Um, now a lot of times, right, a lot of times, um, we do not. Let's, let's, a lot of times the company, uh, let's say, do not have a, a specific loan right, for the project, right, uh, or you know. Yeah, you know they, they just do not go out and borrow a specific loan for the project, right? Like the the, like the case that we have here. Then in that case, we have to use the weighted average method, right? Uh, remember, the weighted average method is the, the method that we we have to go and take a look at the the uh, um, the, uh, the, the the interest rate of the other of the other uh, loans, right? Uh, to you know to um, to figure out a, a specific interest that we we're going to use, all right? Um, all right. Um, so now let's take a look at uh, at the other example, all right? So if we go to if we go to the um, in class exercise here, all right? Let's take a look at this example here. So uh, a company constructed a building for its own use. Construction began on January 1st and ended on December 30th. The expenditures for construction were as follows. So January 6, January 1st, $620,000. March 31st, $720,000. June 30th, uh, $520,000. And October 30th, not $60,000. So to help finance the construction, the company arranged a 7% construction loan on January 1st for $940,000. The company's other borrowings Right, uh, outstanding for the whole year. Consider uh, consisted of a three million dollars loan and a five million dollar note, with interest rates of eight percent and six percent respectively. So we say that's us to use the specific interest method to calculate the amount of interest capitalized for the whole year. All right. So in this case, right, first let's kind of analyze it a little bit. So first of all, here you know they tell us exactly how much expenditure incur. Right. Uh, so they tell us the timeline of the expenditures incurred during the year. So in this case, we have to calculate the, the time weighted average expenditures, right? Before we can calculate the the uh, capitalized expenditures, 
uh, capitalized interest. Sorry. Uh, second of all, in this case, they they do acquire a, a specific loan, right, uh, for for the construction of this uh, this building, and the loan the amount is nine forty thousand dollars, interest rate seven percent, and then on top of that, they have two outstanding loans, right, that is not not specifically used for for the construction of the building, one three million and the other one five million, and eight and six percent interest rates, all right, so. Uh, first of all, we're going to calculate the amount of uh, accumul the weighted, time weighted accumulated expenditures. Right. So you can see here, you know, we we, we calculated right, using the timeline here. Right. So the total average uh, weighted uh, the weighted uh, the time weighted accumulated expenditure is uh, one point five eight million dollars. Right. One million five hundred eighty thousand dollars. This is the amount that we have here. All right. So now. This amount, right, and this uh, accumulated expenditure, right, one million five hundred eighty thousand dollars. This amount is higher than the specific loan that we get to to fund this this constructions, right. Remember, the loan, the specific loan, the specific construction loan is only nine forty thousand dollars. But our weighted, our time weighted average accumulated uh, expenditures for for the first year is already one million five hundred eighty thousand dollars. So that means that you know the company in this case will have to use the funding form for the loans, right? We're going to assume that, right? So down here, that's what we have here. So of this one million five hundred eighty thousand dollars expenditures, right? The first one hundred forty thousand dollars, we're going to assume that the company is going to use the whole proceed of the construction loan to fund it, right? So that's why we use the seven percent interest rate here, right? So this is the specific interest rate of the construction loan, right? So we assume that the company is going to use the whole amount of this nine forty thousand dollars. To 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 service right to fund the the first nine forty thousand dollars of the you know of the of the one million five eighty thousand dollars here, all right, and then the rest right which is six hundred forty thousand dollars, we're gonna assume that this amount come from come from the other loan, right? Come from the the uh, you know the three million and the five million loans, right? Some portion of, of those loans will, will will help the company finance these constructions, all right. So here we will have to calculate the weighted average of the of the other loans, right? To find out what is you know what interest rate we use, right? So this is the weighted average that we, we just talked about earlier, right? Uh, and again here we have to use this method because because the the, 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 the you know in this case the company will have to use funding from other sources right, other than the specific loan that they, they acquire. Right. So now here they already did the calculation for us. Uh, so three million dollars loan, right? Eight percent interest, and five million dollar loan, six percent interest. So, uh, so from there we can calculate the the total interest rate, right? The total interest uh, that the company had to pay for this loan, for these two loans over the, the year, over the one year, and that is five hundred forty thousand dollars. If we take five hundred forty thousand dollars divided by eight million dollars, we get six point seven five percent. So this we're going to assume this is going to be the the percentage. Uh, of the interest rate that the company had to pay for this true loan, right? Uh, so we take six forty thousand dollars times six point seven five percent. That give us the capitalized interest on the six forty thousand dollars, right? So now here we add the two capitalized uh, interest amount together. We have one hundred nine thousand dollars, and this is going to be the amount, right, of the capitalized interest, right? So at the end of the year, when the company, you know. Report is capitalized uh, when the company calculate the accumulated expenditures. They're gonna take 1.58 million, right, plus 109,000 dollars, right, and that's gonna give us uh, 1 million 689,000 dollars, and that's gonna be the amount of accumulated expenditure that the company gonna report on the building. All right, so I know you know this is is kind of complex, right? Um, yeah, but you know we just need to be be careful in you know in uh, in uh, you know recognizing the, the amount here, right? So you know if again if this accumulated expenditure, right, is less than the the specific loans that the company uh, acquired, then we just use the seven percent, right? You just use the the, the the interest rate of the of the specific construction loan. 
but in this case since it's higher than that amount right 1.58 million dollars higher than the nine forty thousand dollars of the specific construction loan so that's why we have to to use the weighted average method to calculate the interest rate on the you know on the the portion of the of the expenditure that is funded by the other by the other uh, outstanding loans right now let's say if the company doesn't acquire specific construction loans right then we're going to assume that the whole amount here is is actually funded by by the the other outstanding loans right and we're just going to use the 6.75 percent on the whole amount 1.5 million dollars all right all right so that was uh interest capitalizations all right so now let's just move on to talk about r d um let me see all right r d research and development all right so what can be de defined as the research and development activities so here right, it has two meanings right it has two portion research according to gap research is a planned search or a critical investigation to discover new knowledge right, that helps developing a new product or service or a new process or a new technique or improving an existing product or, or process all right that research much development development is the second phase you can think of it that way right? this is a translation of research findings into the plant or design for a new product or process or improving existing product or process uh, whether intended for for sale or use right? so first you know you develop first you you, you research right? you find you know the 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 new knowledge right in either building a new product or you know improving you know, existing product or processes development is second phase right here we come up with a way you know to transfer the knowledge that we get from research you know to find a way to 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 to, to implement it basically right so that research and development right so as i may have mentioned earlier usually research and development costs are usually expand ex expanded right uh usually expensed um so let's see right so what kind of cost can be considered as r d costs right so r d costs can include you know salary wages and labor costs for the r d personnel right so if we you know hire uh either company hire uh researchers right scientists or some engineers to come up with you know with a with a with a new prototypes or, or to develop a new patents right something like that then you know the salary which is paid for these people will be considered as already cost right uh, cost of the material consumed uh, or the cost of the equipment or the facilities right used in R&D projects or even you know the cost of some intangible asset used in in the R&D projects right that can also be included in the in the R&D cost cost of services performed by the others right so let's say the company go and hire some other external firms uh, to to help them you know in uh, in some some steps right in some 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 steps of uh, of the in the r d process then that can also be cost later as the part of the r d cost uh, a reasonable allocation of indirect costs related to r d activities so you know think of this as the overhead cost allocations right uh, to let's say to the R&D facilities you know that can also be considered as R&D cost all right um, now in terms of uh, let's say if the company purchases equipment or facilities right to 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 to, to facilitate the R&D project now if this assets right, if this equipment and facilities are only used for one single R&D project right then the cost of this you know this 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 uh, assets need to be expanded immediately right in the current year in the year that they are acquired all right now if the asset can be used for you know for other r d project as well right for example let's say if they they purchase a facility and if the company purchases a uh, facilities and they use it as a as a lab right for all of their other all of the r d projects uh, then in this case they may be able to depreciate the, the assets right over the years right uh, then the depreciation can be treated as r and expense right uh, uh, in the period that the, the asset is used for 
for the, the specific R&D activities. All right. Um, now, talking about timeline, right? So a lot of times, you know, the timeline of R&D may not be very clear, right? But you know, we we trying to our best to to kind of um, specify them, right? Um, so first of all, take a look at this timeline here. So we have three point in time, right? We have three important point of time here. So the first point of time is the start of the R&D activities. The second one is the start of commercial production. And the second, uh, the third one is the sale of the products or the process. All right. So this three time points, right? These three points in times define our timeline for R&D expenditures, all right? So any cost that incur between the start of the R&D activities and the start of the commercial productions, this usually we, you know, usually we treat all these costs as R&D costs, all right? And then any cost that incur between the start of commercial production and uh, the sale of the products, then we treat this as it's not R&D cost, all right? Uh, so here, down here, we have some example here, all right? So again, for, for R&D cost, we have, you know, laboratory research aim for discovering new knowledge, searching for application for new, res uh, new research findings, right? design, construction, testing, uh, prototypes, right? Uh, modifications for of the formulations and design of a product or processes. Right? All of this may be considered, you know, all of these activities right, incur it happens between you know between the start of the R&D activities and the start of the commercial productions, right? So once once the company is ready for for commercial productions, that's when the R&D stops, right? Uh, now here are some example right, of some of the activity that may not be considered as as, as R&D, right? So first of all, uh, engineering follows through an early phase of commercial productions, right? So let's say if the company is ready to to start commercial production. Uh, but they are trying to, um, you know, maybe they, they produce the first batch, right, to kind of see what's what's going to happen, right, what the quality, what what are the um, reaction of the market, right. Uh, so this kind of costs are not cons cannot be considered as, as already cost anymore, right, because they already start to to produce, you know, commercial products of the of whatever they, they developed before, right. Um, quality control during commercial productions, right, routine testing routine ongoing effort to refine enrich and otherwise improve the qualities uh, so all, again all of this cannot be considered as, as R&D right? because they already the company already started to to to, to produce the commercial uh, products right all right so now let's take a look at this example here all right so we have research and development costs of uh, SQ company and uh, uh, so during 2021, R&D salaries and wages, $10 million. R&D supplies, consumes during 2021, $3 million. Uh, they purchase, uh, purchase of R&D equipment, $5 million. Right? Uh, patent filings, uh, $100,000. Payment to other uh, for services performed in connection with R&D activities, $1.2 million. Uh, in total, they incur nineteen point three million dollars. Right. So, of this cost, the R and D salaries, wages, the R and D supplies, the uh, payment to other to you know for the service that they they, they help us in in you know in connection with R and D activities. These are the costs that we can consider as the R and D cost. Right. Now, the purchase of R and D equipments. In this case, we will have to see. Right. Uh, whether or not this purchase of equipment can, whether or not this equipment is used for this project only, or it can be used for other projects. Right now, if it's only used for this project, then you know we we can include this five million dollars as part of the R and D cost. Now, if this equipment is not used only for this project, then you know we will have to see. Right, uh, then you know in this case we may only be able to. Uh, to expand the, the depreciation of this equipment during the time that this is used for this specific project. All right. Um, so let's see. Now here they give us some more information. Right. Uh, 
the project resulted in a new product to be manufactured in 2022. The patent was filed with the U.S. Patent Office, so that is the, the patent filing a legal cost here. Right. Uh, the equipment purchase will be employed in other projects as well. Depreciation on the project, uh, sorry, depreciation on the equipment for 2021 was five hundred thousand dollars. So in this case, R and D expenses is fourteen point two million dollars. So that includes you know ten million dollar here right. R and D wages, selling wages, uh, three million dollars of R and D supplies. Uh, Okay. consumed and 1.2 million of the, the services that uh, other you know other third party helpers help the company to do right. so what's 14.2 million dollars cash is 14.2 million dollars right um, in terms of equipment right so here we're gonna just you know debit equipment right we're not gonna expand this we're gonna capitalize this five million dollars and uh, cash five million dollars Now, as I mentioned earlier, right. the five hundred thousand dollars of the P session for the equipment. So, the, because the equipment is used for the project in twenty twenty one, this five hundred thousand dollars of the P session can be you know, will be recognized as as R and D cost, and it's going to be expensed. All right. Um, what else? What about the patents? Right. So, the patents here, because patents now become become the company uh, intangible asset right so we're gonna just gonna record this as a as an intangible asset right so we debit patent one hundred thousand dollars and debit cash one hundred thousand dollars all right so in total right we have 14.2 million of r d expenses capital lies of equipment is five million dollars and capitalized as patent of one hundred thousand dollars right now this fourteen point two million doesn't include the five hundred thousand dollars of depreciation, right? uh, but because they this five hundred thousand dollars is not, you know, is, is not showing up here, so that's why they, they do not include it down here. All right, so let's see. Uh, yeah, now let's let's just uh, walk through some examples. All right, so let me uh, switch back to the. Uh, the uh, the uh, uh, what's it called in class uh, exercise here. All right, all right. So let's see. Early in year one, the Carberry company began developing a new software packages uh, package to be uh, marketed. Uh, the project was completed in December year one at the cost of fifty million dollars. Of this amount, ten million was spent before technology feasibility of the was established, right. and uh, Carberry expects a useful life of five years for the new product with a total revenue of twenty-five million dollars. During the U, the revenue of uh, ten million dollars was recognized. So they want us to create a journal entries record year one development cost. All right, so let's take a look. Here it is. All right, so. Here say that you know ten million dollars was spent before technology technological feasibility was established, right? Meaning this ten million dollars is solely spent on on R and D, right? Because you know before the technology is, is feasible, right? Meaning before the technology is, can be can start to be you know to be produced as a as a commercial product, right? This is this ten million dollars is how much they spent before that point, so that's why. Here they recognize ten million dollars as the R and D expenses, right? And then the other five million dollars, right? They just gonna do is recognize this as a software development cost, right? And this is different from different from R and D expenses. Right? So let's get back to here, All right? Uh, here in this timeline, it kind of summarizes what we just saw, right? Um, so in this timeline. Right. we have the start of R&D activities right and then we have technical technological uh, feasibilities right so this is the point where you know the company has already completed all of the designing and all the coding right and the products are, are ready right uh, to, to, to are almost ready to be to be uh, to be released to the market right 
Uh, now, uh, uh, you know, again, right? Sometimes, right? Once the company, once the product is already has the, the technical technolo technological feasibilities, right? the company will have to, you know, spend some time in maybe researching the market. Um, maybe they want to, uh, you know, uh, refine the the refine the software a little bit right so there's a gap between the technological feasibility point and the date of the product release all right so in this case you know any cost that the company incur between the technological feasibility point and the date of the product release they will have to to to, to capitalize it right and that's what we saw in the in that example that we just you know, we just just covered right in this example software development cost so this software development cost these are the cost that the company already capitalized all right this is not expense anymore right because this cost is incurred between the technological feasibility and the date of the product release all right and then any cost that incur after you know after the date of product release then you know that's just going to be the the you know normal cost right cost of goods sold right uh treat it as a normal sales all right um so that's what we we have here right so again in this example right any cost that incurred before the the uh, feasibility uh, the technological technological feasibility point uh we treat it as r d cost and we expand them right away right um all right uh and then you know any cost that happened up you know between the feasibility point right and the the, the, the start of the products we should it we're gonna we're gonna you know capitalize it right and here we have you know software development costs we capitalize for five million dollars all right now let's move on to see um, this young this example uh, so on September 30th year one uh, Fox and software began developing a software program to shield personal computers from malware and spyware uh, techni technological feasibility was established on February 28, year 2. The program was available to re for release on April 30th of year 2. The development costs were incurred as follows. So, between September 30th through December 31st of year 1, $3.5 million. Between January 1st and February 28th of year 2, uh, $700,000. And then from March 1st through April 30th of year 2, $500,000. And up here say the company expected useful life for four years of the soft, for the software. Total revenue of $4.5 million during that time. And during the two, the revenue is uh, $1.5 million. So the question one is to create a journal entries uh, to record the development cost for year one and year two. All right. So first, let's kind of analyze a little bit. Right, so first of all, they started or the R and D process on September thirtieth. All right, and uh, the technological technological feasibility was established on February twenty eighth of year two. All right, so basically, the period during the whole period from September thirtieth until December thirty first. Right, this three point five million. These are pure R and D, right. and we're gonna expand this. And then between January 1st and uh, February 28th, right, this is still, you know, before the technological feasibility. Right? So this $700,000, we're going to treat it as a, as a R&D expenses as well. Right. All right. Now, after February 28th of year two, right, and uh, anything that happened between February 28th of year two and, and uh, April 30th of year two, this, uh, you know, this cost is going to be capitalized. Right? Are, you know treated as a development cost right so in this case you know there's a expense there's a cost that incurred between march 1st and april 30th of year two so this five thousand dollars you know it's very likely that we have to capitalize this all right so let's see all right so first of all year one all right business amount is between you know september 30th and december 31st right super five millions expense right away right already expenses 3.5 million 
year two, right? Uh, the seven hundred thousand dollars. This seven hundred thousand dollars incurred before the technological feasibility point, right? So we, you know, with expenses, we treat it as R and D expenses. And then this five hundred thousand dollars incur, you know, between the physic the technological feasibility point and the 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 the, um, the product release date, right? Uh, so this we have to capitalize it, right? treat it as a development cost, software development cost, five hundred thousand dollars. All right. So again, you know, the timeline is is very important in you know in 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 R and D, right? When we deal with R and D, right? We have to make sure we we follow the timeline very closely. All right. Um, let's take a look at this example right here. All right. So here, uh, let me see what do we have left. All right. We there's over a question left. So let's take a look at this questions. So this one is may not um, necessarily related to R and D, but you know, just like an overall practice problems for us. Uh, so as state corporation were organized on early in year one. Uh, oh, so this is um, actually uh, related to to the startup cost, right? So let's let's take a look at startup cost for a minute. All right, so bo, 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 startup cost. So startup cost usually, you know, include all of the organization costs related to to organizing a new entities, right? For example, you know, legal fees or state filing fees to corporate, right? Uh, and usually companies are required to expand all of the costs related to the startup and organization activities in the period that they they started, right? Uh, rather than capitalize it. So usually, you know, it's like R and D, we have to expand all the startup costs. So let's take a look here. All right. Um, so here, right. So uh, the company established in year one. Actually, fees in connection with the organization of the corporation twelve means twelve thousand. Uh, state filing fees three thousand. Patent purchase patent twenty three thousand. Legal and other fee for the transfer of the patent twenty five hundred. Which is equipment thirty thousand and pre-opening uh, salaries, uh, trainings, you know, uh, and employee training for these three thousand dollars. So now here, right, the organization cost is going to include you know the twelve thousand ultimately fees and three thousand dollars of the state filing fees for corporation costs. So that fifteen thousand um, dollars. So that is the organization. You know, that's the startup expense, right? Um, and then the other startup expense that we're going to have is going to be the pre-opening salaries and employee trainings. Right? So this, you know also related to the startup cost so we have the expenses now the company also purchased the patents and <coughs> and, and uh, equipment during this period All right so for this you know even though in the company purchased this uh, during the the, the the startup startup period uh, but because the company is going to use all of this equipment and patents you know in the futures to generate revenues uh, so that's why we have to capitalize this patent and equipment All right so for it for patents uh, the the price of the patent is twenty three thousand, legal fees and stuff you know twenty five hundred. So the total price of the total cost of the patent is twenty five thousand five hundred. Uh, for equipment, the company purchased for thirty thousand dollars. Right? So we we also you know capitalize equipment for thirty thousand dollars. All right, and that's it. All right. So again here you know startup cost. All right. So for startup cost, so organization cost for sure kind of expenses. And then we also have some, uh, you know, pre-started, um, pre-starting debt expenses right, for employee training. Uh, so this we also expense it. All right. Now let's take a look at the next uh, problems. So we have Star Search Corporation began to work on three research and development projects. One of the project was completed, uh, and commercial production of the development product began in December. The company first. Uh, the company fiscal year end is December 31st, and all of the following 2021 expenditure were included in the R&D expenses account. Uh, so let's see. So we have salary and wages for lab research for eighty thousand dollars, design construction of the pre-production prototype three forty thousand dollars, quality control during commercial production uh, thirty thousand dollars. In terms of material and supply cost, we have lab research uh, for seventy thousand dollars and construction of production prototypes for the eight thousand dollars purchase of equipment uh seven eighty thousand dollars patent filings and legal fees 
for complete the project, fifty eight thousand dollars, and payment for uh, payment to other research, uh, two ten two hundred ten thousand dollars. And here it tells us uh, two hundred ninety thousand dollars equipment were purchased solely for the use of one of the projects. All right, so this is you know this two ninety thousand is going to be treated as uh, as expenditures, right? Research uh, R and D expenditures, R and D expenses, right? Uh, after the project completed, the equipment will be abandoned. The remaining four ninety thousand dollars equipment will be used for future R and D, future R and D projects. And the useful life of the equipment is five years. So assume that all of the equipment acquired at the beginning of the year. All right. So in this case, I believe they have, uh, you know, recorded all of this expenditure in the wrong account. Because here, up here, they say all of the following traditional expenditure were included in R and D expense. All of this were included in R and D expense, but we know that that's not not true, right? Because uh, at least you know one of the projects was completed for commercial and development uh, for for you know for for, com for commercial productions, right? So at least some part of that cost will have to be capitalized, um, and then you know some equipments are not used solely for R and D. For one R&D project, right? They uh, some equipment are used for 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 few are there for future use as well. So we will have to capitalize some of the equipment as well, right? So basically, in this case, we have to make a bunch of recorrecting joint entries to 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 to, to, correct, to correct this mistake, right? Uh, and at the same time, you know, this uh for this four ninety thousand dollars equipment R&D projects, uh, we will probably have to uh, record some of the depreciations. Right, as that part expense. All right, so let's see. Here's what we have. So the first thing we do is to reverse right, the the uh, equipment. Right, so we have four ninety thousand dollars with debit equipment and credit uh, research and development expense four ninety thousand. So here we are, you know, making this inventory to to capitalize this equipment that we are using. You know, that are not solely used for R and D for for one single R and D project. Right. All right. Now here we have uh, ninety-eight thousand of accumulated research and development expense and accumulated depreciation ninety-eight thousand credit. So this is the amount, right, uh, of accumulated depreciations that we have to recognize as expense. Right? Remember, uh, and this I believe should be you know um, should be uh, twenty uh, twenty percent of this four ninety thousand dollars, right? Because this four ninety thousand dollars equipment have five years. Of uh, useful life, right? So, so for the current year, the, the depreciation expense is going to be ninety-eight thousand right? dollars, and we we're going to expense that. All right. Um, all right. Now, patent, right? Here we debit patent for fifty-eight thousand dollars, right? So if you notice here, we have patent filing and legal fees fifty-eight thousand dollars, right? So. We have kind of talked about this earlier in one of the examples that we covered earlier, right? So this this fifty thousand dollars, we have to treat it as part of the patent cost, right? And we have to capitalize this, so that's why we are debiting patent here for fifty thousand dollars. We credit research and development spend fifty thousand dollars, all right? All right. And lastly, we have inventory thirty thousand dollars. So down here we have quality control during commercial production thirty thousand dollars. So here, you know. Uh, these are the costs of the quality control for for the commercial product, right? And this cost only incur, you know, is, is already during commercial productions, right? Meaning, you know, all the costs here we have to to capitalize it, right? And usually we we we, we uh, treat it as as part of inventory cost, right? So that's why here we are debiting we are debiting inventory for thirty eight thousand dollars, and we credit research and development expense for thirty eight thousand dollars. All right. So here, you know, in this example, we, they, 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 uh, in a, you know, they, they, uh, they have missed recording right, uh, some of the expenses as as on the expense. Right? So here we are, we're trying to fix it. All right. So let's see. Lastly, this is our last question here. Right? We're almost there. So uh, this look like a, a comprehensive problems, right? one of those comprehensive problems where we have to deal with a lot of, of, of stuff here. So consider each of the transactions below, all of the expenditures were made in cash. So number one, 
Edison company spent $27,000 during the year for experiment, experimental purpose in connection with the development of new products. Uh, number two, in April, uh, the Marshall company lost a patent in Fijian suit uh, lawsuit right, and paid the plaintiff $9,500. Three, in March, the Cleanway laundry mat bought equipment. Cleanway paid $21,000, down, signed a non-interest bearing note requiring the payment of $25,500 in nine months. The cash price is $40,000. Number four, on June 1st, uh, Jamson Corporation installed a sprinkler system throughout the building at the cost of $43,000. Uh, number five, um, the major company Plenty paid $27,000 legal fee in November, November in connection with a successfully infringement lawsuit on its patent. Uh, number six, Johnson Company, the Johnson Company traded its old equipment for new equipment. New equipment has a fair value of $14,500. Old equipment has the original cost of $14,900. Uh, book value of $7,500 at the time of the trade. Johnson also paid cash $11,000 as part of the trade. Exchange has commercial substance. Right? So here we have uh, six scenarios of six companies and we have to make a journal entry for each one of them. Right, so let's start. Uh, so let's see the first one. Edison company spent $27,000 during the year experimental purpose connection with development of a new product. So this, you know, very easy, right? We're gonna R and D expand twenty seven thousand, right, the whole amount, and we debit cash twenty seven thousand dollars, credit cash twenty seven thousand dollars. Number two, in this case, uh, the company lost a patent infringement suit and paid the plaintiff ninety five hundred dollars. Right. So it's not very clear, you know, what what is the, the the final result here, right? Do they lost the patent? Right. If they lost the patent, then they have to remove the the, the book value of the patent the whole way. Right. Uh, but it's not very clear here. Uh, they just tell us, you know, they, they had to pay $9,500. So that's why here, basically, we only treat it as an expense, right? So legal fee expense of $9,500, credit cash, $9,500, right? Um, number uh, three, right? So the company Laundry Mart, right? Cleanway Running Mart paid $21,000 down, signed a non-interest bearing note, right? Non-interest bearing note, right? Requiring a payment of $25,000. $25,500 in nine months. Cash prior equipment is $40,000. Right. So here, right, the, the value of the equipment is only $40,000. Right. The company paid $21,000 cash as a down payment. And they have a note, a non-interest bearing note of $25,500. Right. So if we add this two amount, $21,000 plus $25,500, it's already you know, $6,500 more than the, the value of the, of the equipment. Right. So in this case, you know, we have to recognize some, some discount, All right? So here's what we do, All right? So equipment, book value $40,000, we debit. Cash, we pay down payment, so we credit cash $21,000. Note payable $25,500, right? So the difference between, you know, between the debit side and the credit side is $6,500. So this is, you know, the discount that I, I just talked about, right? This $6,500, we had to recognize it as a discount on notes payable. Right, because here there's no uh, it's a non-interest bearing note, right? So you know we cannot uh, have any any interest expense to be to recognize here. So that's why we have to to recognize it as a discount on notes payable. All right. Uh, let's see. Number four. Right. June first, uh, James and Company installed a sprinkler system throughout the building at the cost of forty-three thousand dollars. So here, this is a. Uh, improvement on the asset right on the building right so we just need to add this forty three thousand uh, dollars to the to the book value of the building right um and that's what we do here right so we add you know with debit building for forty three thousand dollars we credit cash forty three thousand dollars right uh number five uh major company plaintiff paid twenty seven thousand dollars in legal fee in november in connection with a successfully infringement suit on its patent all right so in this case I guess you know they assume that the company someone challenged the companies right, or some party challenged the company on the patents but the the company won right uh, so they, they were able to keep that patent um and at the same time they the companies will have to pay the legal fees right because they have to hire lawyers and plus you know court fee and stuff so that amounts to twenty seven thousand dollars so in this case the company will have to add you know this twenty seven thousand dollars on top of the existing book value of the patents and that's what they do here, right? So we debit patents twenty-seven thousand dollars, credit cash 
$27,000. All right. And then finally, this is the case where we have, uh, you know, a non money, uh, we have a exchange of properties. Right. Uh, so this problem, we, you know, very similar to one of the problems that we cover in, in, in class. So Johnson Company treats old equipment for new equipment. New equipment have fair value of 14500 our equipment has original cost of fourteen thousand nine hundred, book value of seven thousand five hundred in terms of the trade. Josh paid cash of eleven thousand dollars as part of the trade. So the exchange has a commercial substance. Right? So this last sentence is very important, right? Because it's determining how we going to record the the value of the new equipment. Um, so in this case, it has commercial substance. So we basically just going to use the fair market value of the of the new equipment, right? And use that as our as the basis, right? As the the book value. Right. So, equipment new, fair value forty thousand five hundred dollars. So that's what we do here. Right, we debit equipment new for fourteen thousand five hundred. Right, this is again this is the fair market value of the new equipment. So we're going to use it as a book, you know, as a new, as a book value of our new equipment. Right. Um, so the old equipment had original cost of fourteen thousand nine hundred and the book value of seven thousand five hundred. So there are some accumulated depreciation here. Uh, so uh, accumulated depreciation is going to be uh, seventy four hundred dollars, right? Seventy four hundred dollars um, because the book value is seventy five hundred dollars. Right? So we, you know, we can read up the accumulated depreciation by debiting it seventy four hundred dollars. We can read up the book value of the old equipment right? fourteen thousand nine hundred dollars. Plus we have a cash. The company is paying cash right for eleven thousand dollars. Right. Uh, now, uh, the difference between the credit side and debit side, right? In this case, you know, it looks like the, the company, you know, have a loss here of $4,000. All right. Um, so, yeah, so that is, uh, that's how we do it for point number six. All right. Um, All right, so yeah, so I guess that's the the last problem that we have here. Um, so yeah, so I guess you know that concludes chapter ten. Um, yeah, so again, you know, chapter ten is about it's all about you know long term asset, right? And so far we have covered um, you know both tangible and intangible assets, right? And then at the end of the chapter we cover some uh, specific topics, some special topics uh, that we may face, you know, when dealing with. You know, when you when we are long term long term assets, all right. So um, yeah, so I got that that that's it. That concludes our chapter ten, right? And uh, you know, I hope that you guys uh, enjoy this video. I hope this video is not too bad, uh, and I also uh, hope that you enjoy your time with your family right, during the Thanksgiving break. Uh, all right, I look forward to seeing you guys uh, next week. All right, goodbye.